Welcome, everybody. We appreciate you taking some time uh, out of your day uh, to join us on this webinar. Uh, my name is Mike Burke. I'm the executive director for uh, the School Bus Association, and um, uh, we'd like to welcome you all. Um, uh, I will be presenting this webinar along with Lori Simpson from Keystone, who will be doing um, some cameo as necessary. Um, but we appreciate um, the opportunity uh, to work together with Keystone on this um, uh, really unique opportunity uh, for our members. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, uh, and again, the purpose of this webinar is to familiarize you uh, with the grant, uh, the safety grant that uh, was unveiled at the convention this year, and to take a live look at the application um, and just to make sure that you know, everyone is familiar and understands the process. So we're going to move along here to uh, basically um, the purposes for the uh, for the grant. Um, and this is just sort of a review for some folks. But uh, the idea of the grant was to provide funds for member bus contractors uh, to provide safety or to improve safety of their fleet operations, um, the services and or the services provided to their employees or students. Um, also, to raise awareness of the safety conscience, uh, conscience reputation of the industry um, and the association members. And then um, finally, to provide opportunities uh, to promote, among other things, and probably most importantly, those contractors who receive these grants through industry publications and, and general media. Um, so contract eligibility, once again, be a member in good standing of the School Bus Association. Uh, at the time your application is submitted. You, uh, a school bus contractor is, is eligible to, to be considered for one grant per year, and then contractors can work together on grant requests. So if you want to team up with another contractor on a grant, uh, you would submit that application jointly. Uh, but certainly contractors can team up on this. And the committee may award up to three grants per year totaling uh, up to thirty thousand dollars. So, um, you know, this you know, it, it's pretty standard eligibility. Uh, the important thing here really is that if, if you're a little um, uh, cautious or hesitant to go at this alone, uh, certainly team up with another contractor. So, how will the application and selection process work? We have a five-person grant award committee with a representative from. Uh, what representatives from Keystone, uh, our insurance carrier, it could be either basic program or our workers' comp folks, and as well as representatives from our safety education committee. Uh, PSBA staff, it's important to note, is not part of the review or judging process. Uh, we will be um, on hand to receive the applications and prepare them for review. Uh, we will also be available to provide um, assistance, uh, you want to say technical assistance in a way to help um, members navigate the application process. All applications are judged anonymously, and we'll go over that in a minute when we walk through the application. But everyone is assigned a code, and those folks who serve on the grant award committee uh, never know the identity of the applicants. And in fact, when the applications will come in, um, we will review them. Uh, and I've done this before with scholarships, uh, we will review them in-house to make sure that when the applications are being read, uh, if there's any, any uh, mention that, of the particular contractor's name or location, we'll try to do what we can. We actually will redact that or remove that or black it out uh, just, just to keep it uh, uh, fair and anonymous. Uh, that's a very important part of the, of the process. So what if you're selected? Well, if you're selected, the grant, reci grant recipients who are, will be recognized at the 2018 convention in Seven Springs on June 24th to the 26th, then the 2000 grant recipients will be asked to, and I'm putting this gently, discuss their projects at the 2019 annual convention in Gettysburg. I don't want anyone to get fearful about how they want to present it or, or how it's going to be presented, but, but what, we, what, we're, what we're trying to do is 
figure out a way or make sure that the rest of the membership can benefit from um, uh, your project um, and, and, and can learn more about the great ideas that are being um, spawned off of this, this grant, uh, the safety grant. So uh, the PSBA staff will be more than available to help the recipients with their presentations, however that will look. And there's still some work to be done there, but we don't want anyone to run away because they, you know we're, we're going to try to present this and publicize it. Um, and in fact, beyond that, we'll also be looking to publicize these these grants, uh, these projects, um, in the newsletter and in the media, and probably you know, and, and through some of the trade publications or industry publications. So, um, and then how this will roll forward will be anyone in 2019 receives a grant. At the 2020 convention, they'll give a presentation. So you can see how this is going to work. But the idea would be for everybody to benefit off of uh, the hard work of those folks who have received uh, the grant award so they can uh, show off their, their projects and their great ideas. So where can you find the grant application? Um, you can find it online on the website. We have a, a section on the home page at the bottom. Um, uh, called PSBA links, and you'll see that we have added a link right there, and we're going to go live on that in a few minutes to take a look at the application. And of course, um, uh, Maggie can provide a hard copy for you if you would prefer to use the hard copy. Um, and the way the hard copy is set up, as you'll see, um, will be you'll be able to um, add supplemental pages onto that. Uh, but um, either way, uh, we'll be able to um, uh, to, to uh, uh, apply for the grant. Uh, before I move on to the application, I've kind of raced through some things. Are there any general questions yet from the group on the application, the process, where we're going with this? Before we start to dig into the application, which isn't really that in depth, which is part of the one of the, the aims here was to not make this application very difficult. Are there any questions so far from anybody? Okay. All right. That being said, we're going to hopefully go to the website now. And I'm hoping everybody can see the website. Let me look at what this looks like. Okay. Can everyone see the website? Okay. We're good. Okay, good. Um, let's go down to the bottom right of the page. And there you're going to see the Keystone PSBA Safety Grant application. We're going to click on that. And we're going to bring up the application. There we go. All right. So I'm going to take you through the application. Um, uh, Lori and Maggie are online here too. Uh, in case um, I miss anything, uh, what the intent of the application, look, grants can be scary. And, and I, I went to training to write grants, and believe me, it can, be, it can be scary. Many grants have very tight restrictions, and they're very, uh, they're very strict about what order the application should have and what it should contain. Um, I'm going to try to refer to it as sort of an ungrant, the ungrant grant. We're really trying to not make this difficult. We tried to make the application as intuitive as we could to help guide you along and not scare people away. We want people to apply for this and take advantage of this opportunity. And so this was not a game as to how we could uh, make this more difficult or, or, or add more work to your already busy day. So what we tried to do was put together an application that would be easy to use. So first thing you're going to notice at the top of the page here is an applicant code. Remember what I mentioned was that this, uh, this application is going to be judged. Um, the applicants are to remain anonymous to the review committee. So uh, what, we, what we talk about is, you know, try not to provide any identifying information in your, quest, in, in your answers to your questions. But we will be watching out to make sure um, when we review them, uh, just to make sure. So, you know, there's your applicant code information, of course, general contract uh, instructional information um, uh, on the grant, which uh, you would be urged to read over and make sure um, the grants are due no later than um, uh, 
the end of July, end of July, listen to me, the end of January of 2018. Um, and you can either complete the application electronically uh, or fill out this, this, this hard copy. So uh, I'm going to roll through this a little bit. Um, uh, section one is the only place that you will identify your company. Um, and that will not be shared with um, the committee. Uh, but it is your name, obviously, place of business, uh, the size of your fleet, the number of your drivers, number of drivers. Um, and of course, importantly, who is the main contact we're going to be talking with on the application, email and phone. If you are doing this jointly with another contractor, um, we would ask that you put um, both contractors' names on here. Um, if you decide you want to pick one contact for the grant, that's fine. But we'd like to know if multiple contractors are involved um, in, in the application. The rest of this application, we think, is pretty standard. Um, we don't leave you a lot of space. If you do this electronically, you'll obviously have more space. What I've often done in grant applications is I have used the grant application as my outline, but I've gone ahead and submitted um, pages with full answers on them because we obviously don't give you it's a, we didn't want to create a 20 page application. We figured that you could add supplemental pages on, um, uh, particularly if you're going to be doing it on a computer. Uh, which I imagine most people will be doing it, uh, you know, in Word. Um, so again, you know, provide a, a brief description of your organization without using any ident identifying information. You know, um, it's Mike Burke, school bus contractor here in Harrisburg. No, that's not what we want. You know, um, I'm a contractor, and, and, and I have, uh, and maybe describe a little bit about your organization. Um, and uh, again, don't use anything that could be too identifying. Um, yeah. In there. Yeah, and Mike, I think you know a couple of things that we we talked about was just you know it might be I'm 150 bus units and I have this number of elementary runs and this number of activity runs and this number of high school runs and I'm located in a suburban or a semi-rural urban area or whatever it is that's going to be helpful to the committee in determining who is going to be served by this particular grant. So um, it gives a brief description of how you're serving your um, students and the schools you're supporting, but not naming them specifically. Uh, and that just will help to identify the population that will be served by the grant that um, you're requesting. Great, perfect. Um, uh, again, um, you know, describe your grant request. You know, uh, I guess it's pretty self-explanatory. What are you trying to achieve? What is the goal? Um, you know, with, for the grant. Um, so we, again, that's the what. The why is describe your safety concern. Um, this is probably the driving factor that is driving you to propose the uh, initiative that you're proposing. So uh, give us a little description of, of, the, of, the, of the problem, the concern, and what you're trying to address. Um, yeah, and who, um, I'll, I'll give just like, a, a quick example that, that might help start to have people think and then generate some questions. I think like um, in the what, it might be um, we want to improve bus behavior uh, while helping our driver focus on problems of the road. Um, we want to train and equip student bus patrols at the elementary and secondary level. Um, so uh, the why might be so drivers may have a difficult monitoring um, may be having a difficult time monitoring the children while keeping their eyes on the road. So the safety concern is the driver and the student. So it just, it gives you some sense of, um, you know, how to, a very brief statement, doesn't have to be a book, uh, <laughs> um, to, uh, to identify what, what your attempt is with the, the what and why. Great. Thank you, Lori. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the who, of course, you know, who is, and it runs, you know, we're running with Lori's example, who will benefit um, from this grant, company, the employees, and or students, or all of the above. Try to be specific when describing, you know, who is going to benefit from it. Um, yeah, and in that, in that particular example, um, you know, it could be drivers stay focused on the road. Mm -hmm. um, student patrols become, you know, leaders and learn responsibility. So the example was, you know, training student leaders for on the bus. So that was the safety right. initiative. So, 
So multiple benefits, of course. So, mm -hmm. um, and of course, you know, the how, uh, what are going to, you know, this is really the meat of, you know, part of the meat of what you're going to do here. You know, what are going to be the steps necessary to implement the initiative? Um, and, you know, again, I'll look at Lori's example. You know, what are the steps going to be taken? Obviously, you're going to look to, to identify students to be on the patrol. What are the, what's the curriculum? What, how are you going to train them? What do you want them to know? Yeah, what are the key look for points? a teacher sponsor um, right. of the patrols. Um, maybe there's a reward to those that, uh, you know, have participated. And there's, a, you know, some type of scholarship at the end of the year to present to them. Um, maybe it is that you need something to identify them as a student patrol. Um, I go back to the days of when I was a patrol on the street so when kids all walked to school and we all had those orange safety belts and a little badge that said I was a safety patrol. Um, <laughs> similar type of thing, but a bus patrol. Yep, yep absolutely. Uh, and then further, you know, what kind of, there we go, you know, what kind of required training? Who's going to conduct the training? Um, when and how often will the training occur? Yep. And, and good work. Yeah, and anyway, it could be that, you know, that you're going to be using PowerPoints or videos, and so there's a cost associated with those, and that'll go kind of into the next section. But, you know, just, you know, how are you going to do it, and who's going to do it, and, you know, are there any tools that you're going to need to do so? Right. Um, the, the, the next how is, you know, is the grant request related to a regulatory change or a contractual change? Um, and are there any approvals or changes um, that are needed or are going to be needed to current policy or contracts? Lori, do you want to dig into that a little bit more? Well, and that most oftentimes when it's related to a grant is probably going to be no. But what we're asking that, why we're asking that is to know whether there are some added steps that are going to need to be taken that could elongate the process. So typically, we're going to look to say, okay, well, we're going to grant this grant, but, well, you know what, this might be a two-year process instead of a one-year process because the contractor is going to need to get approvals from the school board and the district or whatever, um, or, okay, this is regulatory, so guess what? If one of these contractors is going to put this into place, this may be something that broadly can be made available to a lot more. So should we um, provide additional dollars to expand the grant to be greater than, um, than the single contractor? So it just gives the grant committee some additional information um, to be able to go back then and, and talk it through. Beautiful. Um, then we move on to section three, which is the, your, the grant request amount. Um, and we're, we're, we're working a little bit on this to see if we can um, provide with maybe a sample, uh, a template budget. Um, and so uh, we're still working on this internally a little bit. Um, it's often helpful if we can provide you with at least something that gives you some guidance on. But, but generally speaking, you know, we're looking for you know, any supporting financial documentation that you can provide, uh, how the money is going to be spent. Um, so, again, looking at that, what is the total cost of your project? Um, and the detail behind sort of the, the, the rough detail behind what are the major, the major, the major costs associated with it? Um, how much are you requesting? Um, as well, and how will you, how will the funds be applied to the project? So I think as we talked a little bit earlier, you know, we talking materials, training, uh, we talking bringing in, um, I don't know, someone from the outside to do the training. Are we talking, um, you know, yellow yellow vests for the patrols? Those kinds of things. Um, anything that's going to be needed to. Um, to get your project underway. And then, you know, finally, uh, and this is a question you see on a lot of uh, grant applications, is there anything else that we haven't asked that you'd like us to know, um, uh, you know, included here? And, you know, that could be anything with, um, maybe it's maybe it's some, some, some anecdotal stories or something about uh, that really back up what really really back up why you need to do this why you feel this is necessary how you feel it's going to prove anything that we haven't already asked this is your place to talk about it right there um and and so that that is generally speaking you know and of course make sure you sign it um that is that is the application it is not 
Again, it was intended not to be complicated. Um, it was, you know, and unlike other some grants where you're sort of on your own, um, if you need some guidance along the way, you know, and say, you know, so again, go back in and explain to me again, you know, what are you looking for here? Uh, we're available to do that. Mike, I just, and it never hit me before until you just walked through it and said, be sure you sign it. We need to move that signature line to the first page um, because, and just say that signing here is, you know, um, right. that, you know, for the app, because I don't want the signature and know who the person exactly. is um, on the last page. So um, we'll need to move the signature line to the first page. And I'm sorry, I never right. caught that before. <laughs> I didn't either. I didn't either. It just dawned on me. We're talking about it now. Yeah. And we also, yep. there's, there's one, there's another correction on, on the front page and just the website, but it's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so, so uh, there you go. Lori, Maggie, did I miss anything along the way? I don't think so. Nope, and certainly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, if there's anyone that, um, and I'd throw this out there, if there's anyone who has participated in other types of grants through other organizations and you have a, um, you know, a sample budget worksheet um, that has been simple for you to use, um, if you want to share that with Maggie, that would be great because I know we have talked through some high level things and are trying to put that together as Mike indicated just so that would be helpful. But if anyone has one that they've used, um, that they find to be very easy to use, it'd be nice if you'd be willing to share that with Maggie and we can add that to be part of the packet. Right. Yeah, yeah we, I, want, I, I, we I, want to have as many resources as possible to make this easier to apply. Um, one of the things I should point out on the front page, and I glossed through or glanced over it is, I kind of highlighted an area that, that that is important just to know that you can only use the safety grant for the project outlining the application. That should go without saying. Um, you cannot use the grant for recouping a cost of any prior or ongoing or rented or leased equipment. Um, in addition, um, and this is pretty common in grants, you can't use it to pay for salaries and wages, internal labor, or, or any costs associated with the preparation of the grant submission. So I just wanted to make sure I didn't, uh, I didn't, um, you know, miss that part. We put that in there for a reason. Obviously, again, we put this together to encourage people. We want we want to give the money out. We want to see these great initiatives, these projects. Um, we think this is a really neat way to showcase the ingenuity in the industry. Um, and who knows better than contractors um, about um, ways that we can even further take what's already the safest mode of transportation and make it even safer. Um, there's, you know, there, we, you know, we know there's a lot of good ideas out there. Here's an opportunity to go forward with them and, and, um, actually, you know, get some help to, to try to get this project, get your project off the ground and then showcase it to, uh, to the rest of the members so that everybody can learn, um, from your success. Uh, again, I'll open the floor to any questions. We are recording this webinar and this, we will make this available on the website. Um, so that uh, if anyone's missed it, they can they can see it again, or you can rewatch it yourselves. Um, and of course, if if there are any questions, and I'm going to flip back here to my PowerPoint. Um, if there are any questions, let me get back here. You can always give us a call at PSBA, um, and you can talk to Maggie or myself. You can give us an email. Uh, again, we're here to help. Uh, we want to help people in this program and, and help them uh, uh, access um, this, these dollars um, for, for, you know, for the project. So again, any questions you let us know, I'll give it one more shot. I don't have anyone who's written me any questions or sent me any chats, but I have everybody unmuted. If anybody has a question, feel free to ask. Mike, it's Lori, and one comment I will just make is a lot of people may be sitting there thinking, where do I start to even think about this? You know, this is the last thought mm -hmm. on my plate, you know, and getting ready for school and all of that. Um, you know, 
one of the things that you can start with is if you have had situations where you've had a, a risk that has occurred, um, you know, uh, something that you've had a, an insurance claim for, it might be a good place to start to think about, well, how could I adjust that? And I know a lot of you have had risk um, people come in, um, Anne's been in or someone else from Nationwide has been in and talked with you about those types of how do we avoid this in the future type of thing. Um, but, you know, one of the examples that I talked through with um, Linda Neff, who's our underwriter, was, you know, um, where we've been having situations with um, bike uh, bike accidents, um, buses hitting bikers in the bike lane and that type of thing. Um, and, you know, how to, is there some way to put some kind of um, safety video or training out there as it relates to um, watching out for bikers, that type of thing. And so that was one of the things that we had thought about. And we'd love to have someone submit something like that, uh, where they can <clears throat> develop a video with someone that is to train drivers for pedestrian and cyclist collision avoidance. Um, that could be then broadly distributed. So um, that can be a good starting point um, for thinking about, well, what would I submit a grant for kind of thing. So um, that's just a, just a comment. That's great. No, and, and, that's, and, and, and you're right, because the answer to your question might be right in front of you uh, based on experiences or things you're hearing from your drivers. Um, or, or, or anything that your school's been communicating about potential, you know, needs. And, and if it's something that you as a contractor can work on and the students benefit safety-wise and the district can see the benefit, um, obviously that, that's, that just, you know, strengthens your presence in the community and in the district and the value you bring to your, to your, to your district and to your community. So um, if, if there are no other questions, uh, again, always feel free to call us, and um, you'll be hearing more about the grant. That's why we've given everybody really a lot of time between now and the end of January uh, to really give some thought to this. But do feel free to reach out to Maggie and myself um, if you have any questions. And with that, I'm going to thank everybody. I know you all have a lot going on. We appreciate your time today. And, uh, again, stay in touch if there's anything we can do for you. Uh, thanks again, uh, everybody, and have a great day. Thank you, Mike, for hosting us. Hey, thank you, Lori.